Hello there, sweet cheeks. Jubie Jubies. Welcome back to another fun-filled, butt-kicking episode of... Red Movie Rama. And man, do we have a hot pocket of a show for you today, because we're going to cover the 1980 monster flick, Humanoids from the Deep. And speaking of humanoids, we've even got a special guest that's going to be on the show. Uh, hold on, Skippy. This this is a solo show, kind of. Anyways, but special guest. We're not supposed to have guests on this show. Well, you know me. I, I like to branch out and try something new. So uh, I got a fellow podcaster to be on a show by the name of Court Psyops. Whoa, wait. Court Psyops? Like the Court Psyops? That guy? Oh, so Yeah, you, you know about... Court Psyops and Cinema Psyops. Oh boy, Mom loves him except for his filthy mouth. Yeah, that was a a problem we had back a few years ago. We kind of got in a little tit for tat with them, uh, with the 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 Psyops boys, and uh, you know everything's cool. We sued things over, so it's uh it's good to have him on the show. So everybody, make welcome Court Psyops. Hello, everyone. I am Court Psyops. And I like sticking small items up my butt. Thanks for having me on your show, Rick. Yeah, no problem. It's the best show I have ever heard. Oh, thanks. I go to sleep at night listening to this spectacular show. Great. And the sweet sound of your voice. <laughs> I am Court Psyops. Hey, uh, Studley. That's not court psyops. Well, well, of course it is. You heard him say, "I am court psyops." Uh, court does not sound like a robot. Well, let's let's find out why. Hey, court, why do you sound like that? I was injured in a gang rape by a dwarf motorcycle gang and crushed my larynx. I can no longer eat Fruit Loops. Well, no judgment here, buddy. We don't care what kind of cereal you like to eat, Studley. Something's just not right here at all. At all. Well, you heard the man yourself. Maybe we should call him Robocourt. Well, you know, that does have a nice ring to it. Well, anyways, Robocourt is a big horror fan, and I couldn't think of a better movie to bring him on and talk about. So let's jump into this one. Take it away, Rick. Humanoids from the Deep is a 1980 horror sci-fi movie directed by... Barbara Peters and Jimmy T. Murakami. A fisherman and a scientist fight back when mossy sea monsters assault women. Starring Ann Turkle as Dr. Susan Drake. She's a scientist with a big heart. Doug McClure as Jim Hill, the local fisherman who also has a big heart. And Vic Morrow as Hank Slattery. There's something fishy about that guy. And a whole bunch of other people that uh, get naked and raped by sea creatures. Back to you, Rick. All right, so let's get crack a lacking. We start off, we're in a coastal town that thrives off the fishing market. Hey, there's uh, there's not a killer whale in this one, is it? No, but there is a fisherman out on a boat, and he's got a net, and they're throwing it out, and it's uh, full of something. And the captain of the ship is trying to reel it in, and he's got his nine-year-old son on the boat, and uh, the generator is run out of gas. So uh, the captain tells his son to put gas in the generator. Well, holy jeesh, isn't that dangerous? I mean, that sounds like that kid's a little too young to be doing that. Safety first. Yeah, I, I believe so. And But I think the, the captain is trying to make him a man, I guess. I remember when I was a teenager putting gas in my moped. It would frighten me because I was afraid it would explode. And I was clumsy. Yeah, I, I bet you were. But uh, the captain uh, is trying to tell the guy that's driving the boat to put it in gear and pull forward so they don't lose the catch. But the boat won't move. 
So the captain tells his son to stop putting the gas in the motor and come over here and help them pull the net up. Yeah, because a nine-year-old's strength is really going to help. Yeah, so the, the boy drops the gas can and the gas starts spilling out everywhere all over the boat so he can go help his dad. And that, folks, is another example of good parenting. But yeah, then we get a glimpse uh, down in the water of there's something in the net and it's some kind of creature. Well, being that the movie is called Humanoids from the Deep, I'm willing to bet my gym shorts that uh, that it's a, it's a humanoid. Well, we don't really know for sure, but we do know that this thing is really strong. And when they're trying to pull up the net, the, the captain's son falls in the water. Oh, no. This is not going to end well. Yeah, you're right, because the creature breaks out of the net and grabs the kid, and then you just see a bunch of blood floating in the water. That's usually a sign that you're going to have a bad day. Yeah, and then the the guy that's driving the boat freaks out and uh, grabs a flare gun and runs to the back of the boat to shoot to get some help. And um, when he he falls down and the flare gun hits the gasoline and the whole boat just blows up. Well, that's what you get when you're a bunch of moron fishermen. Well, speaking of that, back home at the docks, the the locals are finding out that something weird is going on because uh, there's a bunch of slime everywhere and all the dogs are dead. Oh, well, let me guess. Their their first response is humanoids. No, actually, they think the Indians did it. Uh, What? What? Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I guess you gotta blame somebody. Uh, so why do they think the Indians did it? Well, because they realize that uh, all the Indians' dogs haven't been touched, but uh, all of theirs are dead. Plus, there's a big rift between the Native Americans and the locals about uh, the damage that the fishermen are doing to nature. Hey, hey uh, does does this movie have a giant mutated bear in it? Uh, no, but I like the way you're thinking. But uh, what we do now is we cut away to a hot blonde. Oh yeah, and she's. T- Teasing up her hair while wearing a negligee. Yeah, man, that's hot. Uh, sir, uh, Studley, I've got an idea. Can can we keep Robo Court and get rid of this crazy, uh, that's hot guy? Uh, I don't know, man. I think the 14 listeners of this show would miss him. But anyways, let's get back to the movie. Uh, the girl, she gets freaked out by a noise outside. And while she's walking around, she gets scared because the phone rings. Uh, let me guess. Uh, humanoid. Uh, no, no, it's not. It's one of her friends that's supposed to be coming over, and while she's talking to her on the phone, there's something creeping around outside. It's a humanoid. Uh, no, actually, it's her goofy boyfriend. Man, this movie is missing all these awesome opportunities. <laughs> well, supposedly they're supposed to have a little get-together with another couple at this lady's house. Oh, yeah, it's going to get hot, sir. Put the weapon down, please. What's more important than that is what's happening downtown, because it's the 75th anniversary of the Noyo Salmon Festival, where everybody gets real soused, uh, like Dean Martin, and uh, dance to some banjo music. I love the sound of banjos that night. It's so whimsical. Studley, this is not court psyops. He hates banjos. Just go along with it, would you? Okay. Well, this sounds like the hot spot to be in, then. Yeah, because it really gives us an opportunity to figure out what's really happening in this town. Because there's a canning company, and they've launched a business in this community, and they've got this scientist who's been tampering with nature to make all the Samson from around there grow to a much larger size so, you know, they can make more money. Uh, Are these people crazy? Did they not listen to the last episode we just did about the food of the gods, about putting the goop? in the food and the giant animals and how that just turns out terrible? Maybe everybody was busy watching Cobra Kai. I know I was. It's a great show, Randy, but you have to have these evil corporate guys in these movies. Well, well let me ask you this, Skippy. Are, are these evil corporate people, are they humanoids? No, no, just uh, just evil corporate people. I want some dang humanoids in this movie. Well, we'll get to that in a bit, but right now we've got a much bigger problem. Because while the festival is going on, one of the Native Americans shows up and he's carrying a dog that's been killed. And he's blaming one of the men in the town named Hank. And those two guys end up going outside and having a confrontation. And uh, we get another example of the white man beating up the Indians. Jeesh, this is despicable. Yeah, but at least there's a, there's a few white dudes that step in and try to help out the Indian. But uh, the fight 
kind of stops short because the sheriff starts shooting his gun and breaking it all up. Well, it, it's about time that the, the law does their job. Yeah, and right after this, we cut to the beach, and the couple from earlier that were going to have the, the get-together at the house, uh, now they're out in the water, and they're doing a little hanky-panky. And uh, while the boyfriend is jumping around acting like an idiot, he tries to scare the girl, and uh, one of the humanoids jumps up and grabs him and rips his face off. Oh, I, I've seen that movie before. It's got John Travolta in it. It's a nice try, Randy. So, so uh, I, I have to ask, what, what do these humanoids look like? <laughs> well, from the neck down, they kind of look like the creature from the Black Lagoon, except uh, they have fins on their back. But uh, their head is what's different. They got like a fish face, but they got huge pointed teeth. And then their brain is, like, overdeveloped, and it's, like, exposed out of the top of their head. Ah, so, uh, fish face, uh, exposed brain. Yeah, sounds like they, uh, sounds like they really tried really hard on this one. Yeah, you know, uh, they're not that terrifying looking, but what they do is what's terrifying, because, uh, the creature jumps up and grabs the girl and rips her bathing suit off yeah, and, man. Uh, proceeds to impregnate her. Uh, 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 okay, hold on. So, hold, hold on. So, to, just to clarify, is is this is this the humanoid or is it the half faced boyfriend? Uh, oh, it's it's the humanoid. Oh, okay then. Well, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Did you said impregnate? These creatures are are uh, making it with the women. Yeah, man, open that window because it's getting hot in here. Uh, sir, sir, please just calm down a second. Well, as well, that that's a nice way to put it, but they're actually just raping the women. Well, what? kind of complete trash is this movie? It's another one of those uh, Italian films where they get real confused with all the rules. No, no, this is uh, it's an American film. I wish I could be handled by one of these humanoids. Well, just calm down there, Robocourt. Anyways, these people need to be locked up and put away. Well, get ready because it's about to happen again and this time we got a couple out in a tent that's on the beach. And, uh, the lady is about to get naked for a dummy. Yeah, now that's hot! Jeez, this guy's having a picnic over here. Uh, well, well, of course she's getting naked for a dummy, Skippy. She's, uh, with one of the local guys, right? No, I mean a dummy, like ventriloquist dummy. Well, now, that this must be where the writer was on acid. It said, hey, you know what this movie needs? A ventriloquist doll. Then some sex. Yeah, now you know that's hot. Well, I, I do have to admit, the scene is both awkward and impressive at the same time. Because she strips down to the full Monty, but then a humanoid busts through the tent and the lady takes off running. Well, well, at least she gets away. Well, not really. I mean, she must really have bad eyesight because while she's running naked, she runs right into the arms of a humanoid. And he throws her on the ground and goes to town. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's hot. H-O-T hot. Sir, you need to go eat some tie Pods. This movie has hit a new level of disgusting, Skippy. Can we talk about something else now? Uh, well, we sure can. You remember the Indian guy earlier, right, that got beat up, Bill? Well, uh, he's got some friends over at his house, and they're all eating and hanging out and having a good time. I always thought it's good to have good conversation and a good lunch. Lunch, oh lunch, let's eat a whole bunch lunch, are you hungry, cause I'm hungry, hungry for a big old juicy lunch. Just when I thought this show couldn't get any worse. Anyways, it's uh, it's nice that, uh, you know, the that we give some time for people to, you know, Kind of have some fun and take a breather from all the rape. Well, yeah, you'd think so. But the problem is, is while they're hanging out, Hank and his guys come by and they throw some Molotov cocktails at the Indian's house and it blows up like a refinery. Uh, holy 
Jeesh, was this bomb like a 50-gallon drum or something? No, it's just a single bottle of vodka. Wow, that uh, it must have came straight from Russia to be that potent. Yeah, it's very possible. But uh, they tell the lady that's with them to jump in the truck and run to town and get some help. And uh, while the two guys stay to put the fire out, uh, a couple of humanoids show up and attacks one of the guys. Oh, no, I, I hope they don't try to impregnate that guy. This is the moment I have been waiting for. You know, as well... You've got a really good point there. Which which really brings up an interesting question now, Skippy. Uh, because it's really hard to tell with, with these creatures. I mean, are they are they out for blood? Uh, is this how they survive to eat? Uh, they eat people and people only? Are they eating dogs or just anything they can find? Is their mission to procreate? Are there no female humanoids? Uh, all great questions as well, and like always, we have no answers. It's a horror movie, so uh, logic just goes out the window. And speaking of window, our lady that took off in the truck to go get help, Gets a big surprise because a humanoid is in the back of the truck and he reaches through the window and causes the girl to lose control of the truck and it drives off the bridge and explodes. Wow, everything in this town is so explosive. Surely the townspeople are hearing some of this stuff. Well, if, if they didn't, they heard about it the next morning because our Native American hero brings his buddy back who's all mangled up from being attacked and uh, he's still unconscious. And while they rush him off to the hospital... We get one of the good fishermen, our Indian friend, and a hot scientist all team out to go look for these creatures. Uh, excuse me. Did, did you say hot scientist? Yes, I did. Well, I don't see how anything could possibly go wrong here. Yeah, and the three of them end up finding a little island, and uh, that's where the humanoids come from. And after they kill about five or six humanoids, they end up finding Peggy, who's uh, one of the girls that's been molested by the humanoid. Well, th th she's lucky that they found her then. Yes, sir, she is. And uh, they also grab one of the dead humanoids and take it back with them so they can take a closer look at it in the lab. And uh, we find out that the chemical that they used to uh, make the salmon grow bigger may have caused the humanoids. And the hot scientists knew about it, but Big Bad Mr. Corporate Business told her to keep her mouth shut. Oh, jeez. So were all big corporate people uh, always the bad guys in the movies from the 70s and 80s? Uh, yeah, pretty much so. And uh, But we also found out there's a big risk that the humanoids will uh, attack the town in the middle of the festival that's going on. Well, of course that would, Studley. How else are you going have a big finale in a low budget sea creature rapey movie but uh you you've got me curious there studley what what does the 75th annual salmon festival in noyo look like well i'm glad you asked because right now we're going to our man on the street louis de bluey oh, no. take it away louis i thought you were gonna say that hey there all you people this is uh louis de bluey out here in the the wonderful town of noyo no yo, no yo, for the 75th annual freaking salmon patty, whatever, it doesn't matter. What does matter is the freaking food they got out here. They got some nice funnel cakes, you got some snow cones, and uh, it seems like everybody's having a really good time. Sounds like family fun. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty wonderful out here and a lot of fun for the kids, but I got to tell you, the women rock around here with the bazoombas hanging out. It's pretty freaking awesome. I heard a little later on here that the, the the queen over here that's dressed up in her bathing suit, I think maybe she's going to show us her salmon patty after a while. Well, that's great, Louie. Have, have you talked to anybody about the recent explosions or any of them concerned about that? No, right now everything seems pretty calm. I'll ask this guy, hey, hey, you fella over there with oh, the, the oh, hair me? combed over on one side and the flannel jacket. Yeah, what? Yeah, uh, what, what the hell? You you having a good time here? Yeah. Is that your sister? Can I, can I you know, hey, take her for a that's walk? That's my wife. You keep her hands off of you, you big jackass. Hey, don't mess with me, pal. I'll come on there. I'll crush well, your on. head in, right? Come on, Mr. Microphone. I'll take your head and put it under a Ferris wheel. We'll crush that mother. Yeah, have another donut, you fat Yeah, soul. whatever. Suck it, Tubbo. Anyways, guys, back to yous. Well, I'll be honest, that sounds kind of fun. Boy, I so would like to have me one of them out funnel cakes, boy. Knock, knock. Who's there? A funnel cake. A funnel cake who? Funnel cake is just the best. Better than a treasure chest. Fun of cake knocking at your door. Hey, Skippy, 
can you stop paying him so he'll stop coming around? Yeah, I, I don't pay Randy anything. I was afraid you were gonna say that. Anyways, what I was saying before I was rudely interrupted is, uh, you know, this sounds uh, pretty good. We had these kind of things down at the naval base. Well, you know, it's not too bad until the scientists and the Indian and the fishermen show up and start telling everybody about what they found and start warning everybody. But uh, I think they're a little too late because the humanoids are now busting up through the docks and they're just oh. attacking everybody. Well, you know what? That's amazing. It sounds just like the ones we had at the naval base. Yeah, and with some grime and gore going on, now these scientist and the Indian and the fishermen, the three amigos, get a great idea and they all jump into a boat, go out into the middle of the uh, the docking area and just spray a whole bunch of fuel in the water and light it. Alright, no, slow down. Slow down, Skippy, because here's here's where things seem a little squirrely because uh, how, how, does, how does this help? I mean, couldn't the creatures just swim down lower than the fuel is and Aren't they afraid of burning up everyone else's boats? Well, maybe I misspoke when I said great idea, but uh, the townspeople are now ganging up and killing the humanoids by bashing them in the head. Well, now, that that's, that's how you strengthen a community, working together. I love it. So, is this how the movie ends? Oh, no, no, no. Because at this point, the, the fisherman realizes that his wife and son are not there. So, he jumps in his boat somehow and goes back to his house. And it's a good thing because the humanoids are busting into his house and uh, trying to kill the lady. And, and she's doing a heck of a job uh, fighting them off because she's got one humanoid uh, tries to grab her and she squirts some Ajax in his eyes and then just uh, goes to town on him with a butcher knife. Oh, Oh boy, I, I can see extra therapy sessions coming for her. Uh, yeah, and then she hears a noise at the front door and she runs towards it with the butcher knife in one hand and the door comes flying open and she goes to stab whatever it is and it's her husband and he stops her just in time. Lord have mercy, this woman's going to need a lot of help. A lot of help. My therapist gives me a lollipop after we have our visit. He never lets me hold it, though. I, I tell you, Studley, this doesn't sound like the court psyops I know. Well, it is. And anyways, you were saying the lady, you think she needs help? Yeah. <laughs> Just wait, because after daybreak the next day, the townspeople walk around looking at the devastation of the town, uh, and it's all in ruins. I bet. And uh, it's all but over, they think. Then it cuts to the hospital, and Peggy, who's the girl they picked up on the island, is having a baby. Oh, no. And it busts out of her stomach, and it's a little baby humanoid monster. What? And even looks more human this time. What? What? Well, 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 well what then? N nothing. That's it. That's the way the movie ends. Oh, no, no. That's terrible. Absolutely. Ter How can you watch this stuff? Well, you know, it's 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 entertaining in a sick, demented kind of way. You know, it's it's horror movies. It's supposed to gross you out and make you go. Well, well, I don't see how this is entertaining at all, at all. I'm telling mother. Well, I guess it's easy to see what uh, Aswell thinks about the movie. What do you guys think about it? Oh, yeah. I give it two tails. Two tails. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. This is this is one of those that really messed me up when I was a kid because I didn't know what rape was. So my first exposure to rape was these monsters doing it. Totally traumatized me as a kid. Uh, if you like crazy Corman boobs and gore kind of movies, this one's pretty top-notch for you folks i suggest you take it out i want to thank court sobs for coming and hanging out with us today too what the heck is this uh hello ricky what the fuck dude hey 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 ho, whoa hey what's what's this how, who is how this? am i on a fucking show that i've never even fucking listened to yeah I who is this? I don't even know who this is. Bullshit. I called you on fucking Skype. You can see the logo. It's Court. Oh. You know it's Court. Oh. Hey, Court. How's it going, man? Uh, not too fucking great, man. Are you trying to trade on my fucking name? What, what the fuck, dude? No, I'm just, hey, I'm just having a little fun, man. Just a little fun. That's all. Yeah. You know, because. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So you're saying that I like to shove shit up my ass with a robot voice. Small objects. Well. Well, it could be bigger, I guess. Look, I'm not upset about that part. That's fine. I don't give a shit. And you know what? Yeah, I even do like banjo music because you know what, mother 
motherfucker. I love bluegrass and I love folk punk. Both things, banjos. So what the f Yikes. That doesn't even make sense. Are you trying to piss me off about that? Because that's not working. But look, don't fucking tell people I listen to your fucking show because I fucking don't. All right? Look, it's pretty fucking simple, right? I listen to all your other shows for all your fucking co-hosts. It's never been about you, Ricky. We had, Dang. we had a short amount of peace that you and I were able to able to make because fucking Danny brokered that. It was all Danny oh, that yeah, made yeah. things better. And if you keep doing shit like this, I will come down on you like a fucking hammer. You think me breaking into your fucking show and adding this into the recording after it is going yeah, to be wait, bad? Wait. You just fucking wait. Anyways, folks, uh, that's uh, that's it for the don't, show. We don't got, don't we you gotta fucking go. do this. Bye. Don't you fucking do this. This is...